Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Homekeeper. So glad to be here today with you. I hope everything's going just really good in your life. It's a wonderful day to serve the Lord. And uh, I'm often reminded, you know, of the things that, that we've always known and then you get to a certain age and they kind of really make sense. And one of them is this is the day that the Lord has made. We can sing it and we can talk about it, but I'm telling you when it resonates in your life every morning, sets the tone for the day. So let me advise you to do that. I have a return guest today, uh, Mr. Terry Kimple, and he is president of uh, political issues in this area. And we're getting ready, folks. We're getting ready for another election. Isn't it weird, kind of weird? that when a president's elected or certainly anybody in Congress, as soon as they get there and get to their office and get unpacked, they start running for the next election. And I can't believe that we've got another one coming up, but just in just a, a few weeks actually, uh, for some primary elections around here. And then in November, there's going to be some of those uh, elections that could take change the balance of power in Washington, D.C. So I like to have Terry on here and he reminds us how important it is and how important your vote is. And if you don't vote, don't gripe, okay? That's the rule, that's the rule. And so we're gonna discuss some of the things that are going on around this area, but also nationwide. And I'm going to join Stephanie. We're gonna make a California spaghetti salad. I don't know about if you've ever been to California, but boy, they have the greatest restaurants and a lot, a lot of fresh food, a lot of fresh stuff out of the garden. And this uh, is no different. This spaghetti salad we're going to make, it's got every kind of fresh vegetable in it. And I think a really good, good dish for the summertime. So we'll fix that for you. But again, I want to offer you that turquoise cross bracelet. I've mentioned before that we ran out of them months ago and uh, could not get any more. And then I very, very fortunately found some. And so we've got them again. And it's a gift to the ministry for at least $20. We'll send it to you. That's the way we stay on the air, you know. When you wear that bracelet, you can take a look at it and you can pray for us. That would be so great. But uh, th this is one way you support us and also some little keepsake you can have and hopefully enjoy. So the information's on your screen. If you use that credit card like Stephanie does, 1-800-229-0059. Or if you're like me and you don't like to do all the technical stuff, you still write a letter to Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And Stephanie, it's not just 20. If they want to send 120, that's okay. Certainly. Yes, yes, yes. Look at this. I know. It's all fresh and yummy. And, and colorful. Yes. Okay, so California spaghetti salad. Mm -hmm. We're going to doctor up a bottle of Italian dressing. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put in a tablespoon of sesame seeds, a teaspoon of paprika, mm -hmm. a half a teaspoon of celery seed, and a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. And I'll tell you a secret. Okay. We're supposed to put the Parmesan in. Yes. But because I love this camera person over here, yes. uh, we're going to leave it out. <laughs> yeah, us. so that'll go on later. That'll go on later, yeah. Right, right. So and it, uh, that's the way you can vary all your cooking at home. Yes. You know. To the like. Does your husband like things you don't like and you have to? Kind He's of just basic potato and meat guy. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want anything fancy. He doesn't, I mean, he wants it simple. Mm -hmm. So I tried like fancy and he's <laughs> like, no, no. So we, we keep it simple at home. Now this calls for a whole bottle of uh, Italian dressing and we're going to mix it up, but I can't believe we'll put it in there. Okay. I, I don't know. I was telling Susan, I like just a whisper of a dressing, whether it's this or. Or a regular salad. A <laughs> Look at that. That's okay. We got a that's lot a of lot. the, the pasta is going to soak it in. So we have a pound of pasta that's been cooked and cut up, chopped up into little pieces. That's a lot of pasta, so we might. Mm -hmm. And then let's put in the yummy stuff first, okay? We'll put mm -hmm. in the zucchini first. We'll put in the celery and the tomato. I love the colors. And then the rest of the stuff would not go in my California salad. <laughs> so that was zucchini, celery, mm -hmm. yummy, yummy tomatoes. I'm telling you though, this really speaks California. Oh my gosh, I went to Tennessee a couple weeks ago uh -huh. and I got Tennessee tomatoes. Oh, come on, did you bring any home? I ate them, Oh, I brought them home and then I ate them, yes. I wanna say there's a difference. Oh, it's the dirt. 
It's, it I read. Bitter. I read because I was like, "Why can't I get a good tomato here?" In in Florida, good, you can. Yes. You so can. I'm going to put onions. And in California, if you stuck your thumb on the ground, it would grow. Yeah. And their fruit is better. Yeah. Yeah. Olives. I used to speak out there. I'm a trying lot. not to make faces. <laughs> and I was in Northern California, and this church had a whole box of Asian pears in my hotel room. Oh my goodness. And they were this big. Nice. You buy an Asian pear in Florida, it's about this big. Yeah. Red pepper. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to not make faces as I do this. Okay, you don't have to put all of it in. Green pepper. You don't have to put all of it in. Well, that's okay, because I already ruined it with the olives and the oh. red pepper, so. It's not ruined if all you love us, this stuff. Oh, because look at that, though. On the, oh, that's isn't beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? I know. It's gorgeous. And just, it it smells so fresh and so good, and you're doctoring up, which I yep. love. Mm -hmm. I've never thought of doctoring up Italian dressing. I uh -huh. just, when I make stuff with Italian dressing, I just use Italian dressing, so mm -hmm. now I know I can doctor oh, it up. Taste it. It's got paprika in it. Mm hmm You like it? Yeah, see, look, that's a lot. That is beautiful. Well. And, and you know, you're going to put it in the refrigerator. Yes, it needs to hang out a little it's bit. It's all going to marry together. Oh, gosh, it smells so. Yeah, if I were going to make it, that's so, all the dressing I would that's put all in. That's all you. Because I would mix it cause up. Because you just good. like a whisper. Just, just a whisper. <laughs> yes. Here, let poetic? me have you taste it real quick. Isn't that poetic? That is poetic. She just wants a whisper of dressing. Uh -huh. I'm that way with uh, spaghetti sauce, too. Put oh. a little cheese on okay. it. Okay. <laughs> She's generous here. <laughs> I wanted you to have a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I know I'll like it. I yeah. have no problem. And Susan's starving, so I think she'll just take this bowl right mm -hmm. here back to her office. Yeah. We'll make a tomato. So oh, good, boy. right? Oh, oh, and that dressing. Good. I want to taste the dressing. Yeah, that's, that is good. Oh, mm -hmm. that just kicks it up a notch. Mm -hmm. So this, good. This Brooke, I hope you're taking notes for when you get married. <laughs> mm. Just kick everything up a notch. That is delicious. So good. She can't stop eating it. Uh -huh. Here? Yeah. Mm. So good. It is absolutely delicious. and So easy. And here's the thing. You don't turn your oven on. Mm -hmm. It's hot right now in Florida. Yeah. It is disgustingly hot. I don't want to turn my mm -hmm. oven on. This would be perfect. You could even throw, you know, some chicken in here, rotisserie yes, chicken, which you don't have to cook because you get it from the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Have a meal. No oven. Think about after that is in the fridge for a little mm -hmm. bit. It's going to be good. So it's called uh, California. California spaghetti California, California spaghetti salad. Yes. And if you want the recipe, it's free. Email's the best, but the other information's coming up on your screen. And uh, so help yourself to that. And then if you haven't met Terry Kimple, he's a very important person. And I hope he stimulates your desire to really be involved in your government. It's very important. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. If you haven't met him, my guest is Terry Kimple, and I, I missed, I knew I missed it when I was introducing the program. It's Community Issues Council. That's correct. So I got that. You're the president of, is it one county, or is it all of, the um, Tampa Bay. Well, uh, primarily focused in Hillsborough County, but we have done things in the other Tampa Bay counties, uh, uh, bigger things, like when we had the marriage amendment effort in 2008. So I led the uh, Hillsborough County component and also coordinated the efforts of the other Tampa Bay counties. How did you get into this? <laughs> real, <laughs> real quickly, I'll tell you the story. Yeah. So uh, I was in Sunday school one morning and I asked for prayer for the Supreme Court. This is years ago. They had made some stupid decision about abortion or, you know, some sanctity of life decision. And uh, the next day I got a phone call from a lady who was chairman of the issues committee at Bell Shoals Baptist Church, which is where I go to mm -hmm. church. And she asked me if I wanted to be chairman of the committee. I said, well, I'm not sure I want to be chairman, but I'll come to a meeting. And that was really where my entry into the whole uh, the whole realm began. And how long ago was that? 21 years. 
I, I commend you. I commend you for that. It, it's, it's not an easy job. It's not easy to get people interested, is it? <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> it, no. It's, it it's, it's, it really depends on the issue, Arthelene, and it depends on the timing. Like right, so six months ago, it would have been virtually impossible to get very many people interested at all in election. But now the interest is starting to bubble up. We've got the primaries coming up at the end of August. So within a month, we'll have people really, you know, say, oh, who should I vote for? What should I do? So, uh, you know, we, we have an effort going on right now. Actually, it's just a bunch of grassroots people working on that. And is part of the motivation to uh, acquaint the voters with the candidates? Yes. And it, what they stand for? Yes, where they stand on issues. Particularly from from our perspective, all of the people in that particular group were Christians, were interested in, in seeing people in office who have a biblical worldview. Because if people have a biblical worldview, you know, their decisions are going to be based on the foundation that, that are the, a foundation that's really solid. Mm -hmm. um, how do you choose the issue? <laughs> you know, it's funny. It, it, as I was walking this path starting back in 1985, 1995, I can't even remember, but it was 95, um, issues have popped up and it's kind of narrowed down pretty much to religious liberty, sanctity of life, traditional family, and then here locally gambling, the sex industry, which is rampant in our area, and the indoctrination of our kids in the public schools. And there are other things that I do, but primarily that's where the focus is. and. Uh, people know, so I'll have people, uh, someone will call me and say, you know, they're introduced, like I had a lady call me the other day and said they're introducing a sex ed curriculum in eighth grade that you don't want them to introduce. So she's getting me more information, but that's that'll be an issue that we take before the school board mm -hmm. to see if we can't do something about it. I don't think you're going to run out of issues. No, uh, not anytime the soon. The problem is choosing. Yes. Because you, you can't deal with with everything. Um, I This came out in the paper in March. Yes. Looks pretty good. Uh, it's from Tallahassee, so yes. it's statewide. Yes. And it gives uh, more religious uh, freedom in the schools for the students and the teachers. Did that surprise you? Well, that it passed. No, not not really all that much because uh, I don't know if you remember, but last year we had spoken about an issue that went on in a, in a high school here locally in, in Riverview, yes. actually. Yes. And uh, the, so there was a teacher who made kids take off cross, either take them off or hide them was what the, were the orders they were given. And the teacher also had uh, homosexual paraphernalia up on all the walls and little rainbow stickers on the kids, you know, folders that they handed their materials in and out with. And uh, Liberty Council uh, brought an action against the school district based on it. The school district did an internal investigation, which was, I would have to say, a sham. That would be the only way I could express it. And they, they exonerated the teachers, no, no harm, no foul, basically. Although, if you were to go into that teacher's classroom now, none of the homosexual paraphernalia on the wall. The teacher has been remonstrated. Uh, no you, people can wear religious clothing, religious jewelry. Uh, so, what about children? Can they, they wear they, children, yes, absolutely. That, I, when I say people, I meant everybody in the school could wear them. But I was specifically, they were pointing to children. But the the point I'm making is, although externally to the world, it was like they circled the wagons and said, oh, nothing happened. But internally, the, the rules went out. And actually, uh, this earlier this year, the superintendent of schools distributed a memorandum to all of the teachers about teachers' participation in uh, an event called the Day of Silence. I think you and I have spoken about yes, that before. Yes, I, I wanted to talk about that. that. Has that happened yet? Yes, it happens in April each year. Uh, tell the viewers what the Day of Silence is. Sure. It's the first of all. It's promoted by an organization called the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network. They are the largest indoctrination effort for kids in the public schools. Uh, the, uh, so they've got all kinds of materials, and uh, they've been at it for. And they're very strong in Pinellas County. They're very. They're really very strong now across the country. Uh, Twenty years, ago, 20, 25 years ago, when they started, their website was very blatantly obvious. They were about changing kids' attitudes towards homosexuality. Now it's far more nuanced and subtle, and but that's really what it's about. And so they promote this day called the Day of Silence, and it's to encourage kids to stand in support of their peers who identify homosexually or as tran transgender. So what you've got is kids at an impressionable age already uh, being indoctrinated really into accepting a lifestyle as uh, being normal. And the 
s district po state policy and in Hillsborough County specifically, but in state policy in Hillsborough County, the policy is teachers are not allowed to engage in any kind of activism. But this particular teacher that I was talking about was very obviously engaging in the activism and encouraging other teachers to engage in the activism. So we were able, it took a year, but we were able ultimately to get the, the, the administration to distribute a memorandum that told teachers you cannot, uh, and you cannot engage specifically in this event. Really? Yes. It's, it's kind of nationwide, isn't it? Yes, it is. And so do they not say anything all day? It was that's the idea. Uh, so the, I'm, I'm sorry, the kids are encouraged to stand in support, and the way they do it is by wearing clothing that says Day of Silence, but also by not either not speaking or putting tape over their mouths and not speaking. And actually, the kids, they're, they are not uh, entitled, I guess would be the way to say it, to not speak if they're called on by the teachers. So the teachers... Oh, please. It's, it's a serious. So the teachers, uh, Stupid too. some of the teachers will encourage them to be silent by not calling them if they know that they're participating. And actually, in some instances, now I've not actually seen it in Hillsborough County, but I know in other places, uh, some teachers have in, have participated as well by putting tape over their mouths. It's sick. I'm speechless. My, I'm silent myself. OK. Um, you offer information uh, as to how to get a candidate on the ballot and you really scrutinize who, who you will support. Yes. How do you get, what if I want to run for something? You know what, I had somebody you know probably encourage me to, I think get on the city council. Uh huh. I wouldn't have a clue what to do, but I'd be glad to, I'd be glad to try. Well, he, Arthling, the, the, the can, truth of it is- Can you, you get me on a I, ballot? Oh, well, I'm, I, sure, <laughs> I can show you the steps. I mean, really, all you have to do is go down, to, 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 each county is, is a little bit different, I think, but, but you go to the supervisor of elections office and you sign up and you have to open a bank account and then you have to qualify to be on the ballot by either paying a fee or by gathering petitions. So that's what, if people come to your door knocking- I can do that. To gather petitions, that's what they're gathering petitions for so they don't have to pay the fee and then you run. Now, obviously, there's a lot more that goes into it than that, but it's really a simple process. And I'm going to have to say quite, I mean, having done this for a long time, <laughs> you definitely don't have to be a rocket scientist to be a, uh, to be an elected official. We know okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's obvious from, from what we've seen. But yeah, also, we know that. It, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of it's OJT. So you're going to learn on the job the things that you need to know. Now, certainly, if you have some background going in, that helps. Mm -hmm. But you don't, you don't have to be a, a gifted politician in order to be a politician. Yeah. Okay, what's, uh, what's really important? I, I would think that you... There's so many issues. There's so many caveats to each issue that I, I would think you'd need a certain, you know, subscribe pecking orders to how you spend your time and how you notify people and what you notify them about. You know, it's interesting that you say that, Arthelina. So I'm, I'm, I, I'm a, a, maybe a filter, a news filter. I'm, I, I, I deliver a Christian perspective on the news is what I do. So I am on the internet all the time reading about stuff. I'm reading the newspaper mm -hmm. and absorbing what's coming in and then kind of weighing it in relationship to other stories about the same issue and also to who the author is, who's writing the story. And then uh, I write a newsletter which I mail out every month. It's actually a hard copy newsletter. It's free, so if someone wanted to receive that newsletter, it's about about half local issues and then half state issues, uh -huh. but uh, they can send me an email and I'd be happy to put them on the list. I also send out emails on alerts, things that are going on right now, and this is geared towards the Christian community. So if there's something that would have an impact on our ability to live out our faith, and that really is the primary concern, is right. the ability to live out our faith, but if there's something to have an impact on that, then I'm gonna send out an alert and say, uh, you need to do this, you need to do that, call this person, call that person, write this letter or whatever that, you know, whatever that may be. Now, you're, you're kind of working on a website, but there's one you can tell us about, right? Yes, uh, the, so we're, we're actually, we've just formed this, if I might, just a little background. So this came out of the effort to force public schools to allow boys to go into the girls' rooms and girls to go into the boys' rooms and showers. This Which happened. you were against. <laughs> <laughs> this happened in 2016, yes. and fortunately, uh, in Hillsborough, and I'm sure it happened elsewhere, but in Hillsborough County in particular, we had about 50 pastors show up at a school board meeting. Uh, at least 20 of them spoke, 
and were uh, definitely, you know, opposed to this. So the district created a policy that did accommodate kids who were having sexual confusion but did not infringe upon the rights of other kids to have their privacy in those intimate places. So uh, out of that grew this effort. So we have a, a, a local leadership team. There's nine people on the team. There's four pastors. There's a couple of ministry leaders. And then there's some, some people who are politically active Christians. And we have developed a strategy. So we have a, a, actually a survey that we send out to candidates and then they respond. And based on their responses to the survey, you can see kind of where they mm -hmm. stand. So to get that information, we have a website that it actually is up now uh, called communityactiontampabay.com. So communityactiontampabay.com. That's correct. So if someone wanted to go and see how, where the candidates stood on issues and how we felt about the, in, the different candidates that were in those races, um, go to communityactiontampabay.com and you would be able to see that information. And uh, we really only put information up about candidates who have returned the, the surveys that we send out. So, because we don't know anything about the other ones. I mean, other than anecdotal stuff, we don't know where the other ones stand on the issues that are of importance. So we live in, in so many areas, a really great state. Um, we've had a Christian governor for mm -hmm. about eight years mm -hmm. uh, who is now running to be a Senator in Washington, DC. And it's so important that Christians uh, really make an effort to know who it is, a little bit about them. Um, you know, they know the latest stupid program and all kinds of reality things that are going on, but <laughs> find a little time to, your own backyard, the yes. people that are uh, really making decisions for you and your family. And I, I really appreciate what you do. And uh, obviously you've got together all these pastors who have, a lot of influence. Now in the time we have left, I noticed something on some of the literature I got from you about uh, a special needs child. I didn't know that you had a special needs child. Well, it's, so our, our youngest daughter, and she's, uh, it, let me see, 47, uh, but she has, she was diagnosed with MS about eight years ago. And she really has very little debilitating uh, in effect from the MS and it's not progressing in her. Uh, it changed physically. your life, right? But it did, it really did. It, it gave me a whole different perspective. So uh, the MS Society, that's multiple sclerosis, the MS Society has a, a fundraising walk every year. And when we can, we go up. So we, Shirley and I went up just a couple months ago and it was great. It was kind of a blustery rainy day, but there were hundreds of people uh, uh, Yeva, that's our daughter's name, Yeva, Yeva's team raised, I don't know, six or seven thousand dollars. I was, Shirley and I were part of that team and our little group raised over a thousand dollars. So we had generous people that, that we know who wanted to support that effort and uh, I, I would just encourage, there, and I'm, I'm not here as a spokesman for MS, but there are so many needs out there and you know, we're supposed to give. That in itself is quite educational and that's what you do. Yes. Um, I was wondering when I heard about your story, do you think most of the money that's been raised through the decades for cures, and God bless the scientists, I think we should really pray for our scientists and researchers, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. uh, that God will really direct them. And I wonder how much of the money that really brings us that final conclusion mm -hmm. is done by these walks. I know the pro-life movement has huge, mm -hmm. Uh, walks at Mother's Day mm -hmm. weekend, and it brings in a lot of funds. For yes, them. well, I, so I, I can only speak for I. I there's a the, the Life Care, which is the pregnancy center that mm -hmm. services Brandon and South uh, South Hillsborough County. I was on that board for a number of years, and. Mm -hmm. Our biggest fundraiser was has always been the gala. So we have a gala every year, and I, so I would encourage you if there's if there's an organization that you uh, have interest in, and they have one of those gala <laughs> celebrations each year, go to it because the programs are always excellent, and it is an opportunity for God to stir your heart to say, you know what, you could support this, and you might have gone in thinking I could give a hundred dollars, and you know by the time God gets done with it, it's 125 or 200 or 500 <laughs> or maybe it's got an extra zero or two on it. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, but I, but, but the walks, our walk was, is the next. So the walks are a big deal. 
And you, you know, you deal with politics a lot. Uh, one thing that has happened in the last few weeks is that President Trump has taken away several million dollars from Planned Parenthood, which uh, to me is an evil Hallelujah. organization. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. They provide more abortions than any other group mm -hmm. uh, probably in the world. Except the Chinese and, government. And Yeah, yes, you're right. And that takes that away. But also now I just read that Planned Parenthood will refer a, quote, transgender, that's kind of a new word, transgender child, to a doctor who will start giving them hormones. Now, I, my blood just curdled when I read that. I wonder if the parents know that, okay, the kid can't afford the testosterone or the estrogen or whatever they put in them, and here is Planned Parenthood. They kill more human beings than any mm -hmm. war we've ever had. Mm -hmm. And uh, now they're going to start ruining our young people probably before they've made a coherent decision, life-changing decision. That's why we need people like you. Well, I appreciate it. And there are uh, many organizations at other levels. And uh, uh, with that specific issue, uh, there's the, now I, 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 I can't think of the American Academy of, of uh, pediatricians and I think that's the specific name of it but they said that providing these drugs to kids who are confused about their sexuality they've called it specifically literally child abuse so that's where it stands. I would agree yes I would agree because obviously your regular pediatrician is not going to do that and so Planned Parenthood has found the type uh, that would do it yes and people need to be aware one of my, I'm taking this out of context, okay? Sure. But one great scripture is, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. <laughs> <laughs> we got too many ignorant brethren. <laughs> you know, and, and, and apathetic too, Arthur. And you know, it's, it's, the college professor said to his class, what's the difference between ignorance and apathy? And one of the students raised his hand and said, I don't know, and I don't care, right? So <laughs> There we got the definition. That's, <laughs> that's it. So, it, but the, Christians, the, the body of Christ, the church with a capital C, could change the course of our country. Amen. Any given day, any given election cycle. And I'm, you, you know and I know mm -hmm. that the only thing that's going to really make a difference for an individual or for our country is Jesus Christ to be personally in, involved in the lives of every person. Absolutely. Uh, we're just about out of time. But as we're making this program just yesterday, President Trump was in Singapore. And... Um, I don't know what your opinion is on that, but I know that Christians were praying, praying, yes. praying, being thank God for technology. Yes. Facebook told us and all this. So pray for your president, pray for all those who are elected, and join me next time, okay? Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 